So what we do in Innovation Africa, it's very simple. We want to bring Israeli innovations to African villages. Whatever Israel has been using for so many years, in growing food in the desert, in pumping water, transferring those technologies to those that really need it. We bring a few solar panels, we bring the drilling machine, we drill to the aquifers. The energy from the solar panels are powering the pump to pump the water up to the tanks. And from the tanks, through gravity, it goes to the taps of water and to the drip irrigation. I was born in Israel in a small city called Rishon Etzion. And we didn't have much money. We were one of those poor families in Israel. Sivan Yari's view of poverty changed radically when she took her first trip to Africa at the age of 20. And that was the first time that I've seen real poverty. I was not really poor when I was young. My father didn't have money, but we did have shoes, a bed, electricity, a blanket. Those people don't have anything. People are spending their day looking for water. People are spending days looking and hours looking for wood so that they can cook. And then I realized after a while that maybe what they need is simply to bring them the infrastructure for them to have access to the water that exists. The water exists beneath their feet. What they need is a few solar panels so that we can pump the water. And I went then uh, and got my master's in energy from Columbia University. And while I was a student, I founded Innovation Africa. From the beginning, Innovation Africa formed strong partnerships with other humanitarian groups, both Jewish and Christian. We're very lucky to be partnering with the CBN, Beersheva Center, and the Alliance for Global Good, coming together, having the same passion in helping the poor, to providing them with the basic needs. It's a partnership that is working, and hopefully we can do a lot more together in the future. To drill wells in Senegal and the Democratic Republic of Congo, Innovation Africa teamed up with CBN, an NGO that drilled more than 200 wells in Sub-Saharan Africa in 2015 and provided clean water for nearly 200,000 people. I wanted to work with Innovation Africa because of the incredible technology they brought to the table. They had a monitoring system where that well would send a text message whenever it got into trouble. Over time, that saves an incredible amount of money. So with these water wells, with these solar panels, with drip irrigation, you bring a whole array of services to a village. For us, that's an incredible game changer. What we are doing in each water project, uh, we bring a monitoring box that measure the total amount of energy being produced by the solar panel and the total of amount, amount of water being pumped by the solar pump and also the water that goes to, for irrigation. We measure all these values with meters. We collect the data and we transmit it to a cloud server. I'm building a platform which enables regional managers to know what's going on because they are the one who needs to maintain the project and fix if something is broken. If you log in, you see an alert, a red or, or an orange alert. It depends, that tells them what we think happens. From the solar panels to the monitoring system to the drip irrigation in the fields, the technology is all made in Israel. Once you're exposed to a need, you know what is the way. You start thinking of a way. They say when there is a need, there is, there is a way. Well, I was an electrical engineer who was working for Israeli utility company and Intel. I wasn't aware of these needs, but once I was exposed to them by Innovation Africa, I understood that maybe we can build a tool to, to help them scale up. By having access now to water, not only they can drink, but by using the drip irrigation, we can grow more food with less water. When we install the drip irrigation, the yield of our crops has increased, the onion harvest has doubled, and the work is much easier for the women in the village. Before we had water, many of them got sick from the workload. 
I'm a professional mason, but I had no steady work and no regular income. I have to feed my family every day, but it was very difficult. Sometimes, all I could buy for my family was a bag of rice. But the Lord never abandons his children. I decided to join this project, and after the first harvest, I had $70. The people who started this project have brought us life. They found us in a state of extreme poverty. We had nothing. We pray every day for you because you've brought life to us. Sometimes, after just one month of work, we can harvest and sell our products. We also have drinking water, thanks to the drilling. This project came to us to make life easier. This village is very poor, so this project is a great blessing for us. We are confident that one day, the whole village will be developed, thanks to the project. In every village, the goal is to empower women and help them feed their families. It's not easy to be an African woman. Unfortunately, what we are seeing in the villages is that children, especially girls and mothers, are spending hours a day to look for water. My heart goes to those women who have to take care of their home, of their children, of their families. And it's break my heart where I see that sometimes they're not capable to do so because they cannot find the water. How are they responding to their kids by saying, I'm sorry, I can't provide you today. So when you give access to water to women, you empower them. You give them back their integrity to be able to take care of their children. I am raising my seven grandchildren. I was battling to feed them. You know how hard it is. The children go to school, but it takes a lot of money to buy books and supplies so they can study. Sometimes I was forced to take loans to pay for everything. Now that I joined the project, I do some gardening to support myself. I sell some of the crops and the rest are for my family. Every day I can sell enough to make 5,000 francs and this helps me feed the children and pay for their school. Then you go back to the village after a few months and you see how much food they are able to grow. They are healthier. The water is clean. And once you give them access to clean water, good water, they have more time. The second thing that you are seeing immediately is how many more children are going to school, especially girls. You go back to primary school and you see it's full house. It's incredible how much we can do in changing the lives of so many people just by providing them a few solar panels to allow them to have access to the water that is theirs. God gave them the water and God gave them the sun. And from here on, there is no limits of what can be done. Throughout Africa, solar power from Innovation Africa is fueling a variety of other businesses all designed to help women earn a living. Something that is incredible in the villages is that they do not have shoes, they do not have food, but they do have cell phones. But in most of the villages, there is no access to energy. There is no electricity. So one of the businesses that we've been operating is having a small cell phone charging stations where now people can come to the church or to the facilities, charge their phones, and the Women Association and the church can then generate money enough to support the project because they're gonna need money to replace the light bulbs, they need money to replace the batteries. So by having an ongoing business that allow them to generate the income that they need, we can make sure that the project is sustainable. In the village of Soma, Senegal, the sun also powers this sewing center, where women can earn money as dressmakers, and this new maternity ward, where patients are no longer being treated in the dark. Giving birth in the village can be very challenging. And when it comes your time, and it's in the dark, you have to give birth in the dark. Maybe at some occasion they have 
some candles or kerosene lamp. But it's very difficult and very challenging. So the solar energy will change that because not only you give them light so the nurse can treat the patients at night time, but also we provide them with a small refrigerator so that finally they can have access to vaccines and medicines. Today, Senegalese farmers in the village of Fuj celebrate their new well. The once barren village now blossoms with mango and cashew trees, sweet potatoes and many other crops. It's an incredible system and I love the ideas that are coming out of Israeli NGOs today. There's a lot to learn from them and they are so innovative in what they do. The second, and the reason I really want to work with them, is they do what they say they're going to do. They don't overpromise. they don't underpromise. When they say they can do something, they can do it, and then they follow through on that. And the third reason is they're a lot of fun to work with. When you're working with an Israeli group, you know it's going to be fun, you know you're going to have a good time. One of the, our policies is to share the technology development that helped Israel to arrive where it is. One of the greatest uh, mitzvahs, which is the greatest, uh, if you would like to say, uh, demands of God, is uh, to help uh, humanity in what we call uh, a tikkun olam or latet, which means you give. Once you give, you get. Tikkun olam for me, it's to have the privilege to be able to share the innovations that are coming out of Israel with the rest of the world. I think Israel had many challenges, but we overcome them. In the desert, we were able to grow vegetables and fruits. We are able to pump water. We have the technology, we have the knowledge. And I believe it's our responsibilities today to be able to share it and transfer the knowledge into technology with those who are in the most in needs. That's what I believe it's our Tukun Olam and what we are trying to do in Innovation Africa.